All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2 Unit 8. We're talking about liquid properties specifically that are affected by intermolecular forces. In previous video, we talked about uh, four types of intermolecular forces. We talked about dispersion forces. We talked about dipole-dipole interactions. We talked about hydrogen bonding, and we talked about ion-dipole forces. Okay, And so now, hopefully, you've got a good handle on what they are, how they work, okay, so on and so forth. And so now... Now we're going to talk about, well, what kind of properties do the, these affect? And specifically, uh, we're going to talk about liquid properties, because that's kind of what we're focusing on in this unit is liquids. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, they affect boiling and melting point. And we kind of already talked about that in the last video, so we're going to skip over it. Um, and then, so then we've got viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action. Okay. Viscosity is defined as the resistance of a liquid to flow. All right. So it's viscosity. So the more viscous it is, the harder it is to flow. Okay. And so you've got the difference between um, like maple syrup versus canola oil. They both are thicker than water, but maple syrup is sl flows a lot slower. Okay. And so it's got it's got a lot uh, more viscosity. Okay, um, and so really what we're looking at is how easy is it for the molecules to move past each other? Okay, and so the easier it is for them to move past each other, the easier it is for them to get out of the way of whatever's trying to go through it. Okay, or just how easy is it for them to flow? All right, so the stronger the intermolecular force, okay, the, uh, the more viscous it is. It's also interesting that as you increase temperature, that your viscosity goes down as well. And that makes sense because like, uh, if you're increasing temperature, these molecules ha are moving more, and so they're able to slide past each other easier, right? So if you take maple syrup uh, and you heat it up, it, ru it starts to flow like water does, okay? Versus, you know, maple syrup at room temperature. I must be hungry for pancakes or something. But anyway, so you've got the, these two pictures here okay of the of these two guys you got sae 40 it's got a high number of molecules so it's got a high viscosity and pours much slower so both of these guys were poured in the same amount of time but notice that this filled up a lot less than this guy did okay all right and so uh so you got hydrocarbons and these are at 20 degrees celsius and you can actually measure these are the units for viscosity kilograms per meter seconds and so uh you can see that as you increase so this is hexane six carbons heptane seven eight nine ten carbons in a row and you can notice that as we add carbons our mass goes up and so our and in each of these cases you know that they only have dispersion forces acting on them they're all straight chains but as we as we go this way we're going up and our our mass so our dispersion forces go up and so therefore our viscosity increases as well okay next one here surface tension you're probably already familiar with this guy here but all molecule or all liquids have the tendency to have this idea of surface tension now water is special because it has really really high surface tension okay and so uh, surface tension all right, is this idea that the top layer of molecules uh, don't like to be interrupted. So these guys are kind of sticking together. You can imagine if you had um, a bunch of magnets, like little small ball bearing magnets that were all stuck together and you tried to push your hand through them, you would have to push hard enough to split those magnet forces apart from one another, right? And that makes sense. Um, and so like in order to get past those magnets, you have to push hard enough to get through there uh, and so that's essentially what's happening with surface tension. And so when you see like a water bug walking on it or videos of like the Jesus Christ lizard running across the water like he does, like, and so he runs across the water and what essentially they're doing is they're just applying uh, not enough force to break all those water molecules. And you can actually see that this water bug here, you can see the dimples pushed down by the water bug. It's pretty fascinating, right? So the, the leg of this water bu bug is literally pushing down and the water molecules are, they want to stick together so bad that they are, that they'll like actually bend down away from uh, the, the bug's leg or with the bug's leg, I guess. Okay, and so, uh, so that's essentially what happens with surface tension. Okay, um, in order to get to the uh, last one here, we need to talk about cohesion versus adhesion. Okay, uh, 
cohesive forces are forces that bind similar molecules to one another okay and so the water or well, the tendency of water to stick to itself is called cohesion all right and then intermolecular forces that bind a substance to something else specifically a surface those are called adhesion okay so you've all seen how your water like if you spritz uh, somebody's glasses with water like uh, like if you wear glasses and you've been out in the rain you'll you'll notice that you get water droplets stuck on your glasses right or like um, like if you have a glass out that's got ice water in it and then uh, it's in particular humid day water vapor from the air will condense on it and it'll make little droplets of water and so it sticks to itself but it also sticks to the glass and eventually those droplets will get big enough that they'll flow down the size of the glass etc etc and so but those are the the two factors that have influenced this idea here of capillary action all right capillary action is the rise of liquids up narrow tubes all right so if you've ever donated blood when they go to test your iron they use these capillary tubes and essentially it's just this really skinny glass straw and so they prick your finger to get a little drop of blood and then they tap tap it with this capillary tube and then it sucks up the blood a little bit up there and then they take that thing and they put it in a centrifuge and spin it to figure out how much iron you had in your blood to figure out whether or not it's safe for you to donate blood all right and so essentially that's that's the tendency of the, your, your blood to go up that tube is capillary action so water okay uh will flow up a tube um <clears throat> because it, and it's uh, has to do with the fact that number one it wants to stick to the size of the glass because of adhesion but then it starts to stick to the side of the glass but because it's got cohesion as well the water molecules want to follow each other so the, the water will go up the glass with that co with adhesion but then the water that's left behind will be like hey wait i want to go with that guy and so they'll go up and the, the you so you got both of these things that is just kind of dragging them up against gravity okay and so <clears throat> um so what's really interesting is this idea here. Now you know that when you're measuring a liquid, right, in a, like a graduated cylinder or something like that, right, here's your graduated cylinder, okay? And you know like uh, when you're measuring water, that water is gonna tendency to make this meniscus, right? And so when you know that when you read it, you read from the bottom of the meniscus, right? This is where you read it. but now the important idea here is well the reason it makes a meniscus at all is because the water molecules okay the water molecules will, will want to travel up the sides and it actually has a greater attraction to the glass than itself okay um, <clears throat> so it's more attracted to the glass uh, this carbon silicate thing all right uh, and be pulled up the size of the glass now and then so then the water will come and you form this concave surface now mercury is the opposite it's not attracted to the glass walls hardly at all and so it forms instead of forming a meniscus this way it forms a meniscus going the other way so here's our graduated cylinder all right <clears throat> so here's our graduated cylinder all right and our mercury will actually form a bubble going the other way something like this all right and so it's kind of an interesting thing. You can't actually, if you want to measure mercury, you can't use a graduated cylinder like this. You have to use a different thing because that's calibrated. Unless you don't really care about how much mercury you have, it's just kind of a general idea. But anyway, um, so if you happen to have like a mercury thermometer or barometer at home, okay, or maybe at your grandparents' house or something like that, take a gander at that thing and notice that the mercury doesn't make a meniscus this way. It actually makes the meniscus go in the opposite direction. That's because it's much more attracted to itself be uh, than it is to the glass walls of the container. All right, and so that's it for this video, nice and short and sweet, talking about uh, intermolecular forces and what kind of liquid properties they affect. Let me know, uh, do your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.